riding up uptown. Woo! I'm a motherfucking monster, monster. My name is uh, Francois Pellin. I'm executive director for the studio and senior producer on the new project. I was one of the first ones to start in Ubisoft Montreal. I'm, I believe that I was number 56. Since 97 to now, uh, the company changed. We all matured. We all made a lot of mistakes, uh, tried different things, had a lot of success on stuff, less on others, but we've all learned. That's been the beauty of Ubisoft in Quebec, in Montreal, is that company that gives you the chance to try stuff and to create. Because when you do something for the first time, we innovate. So these are actually uh, quite old memories, you know. Uh, it's few uh, pages, you know, of uh, design research I've uh, saved. I remember the first time seeing AC1, uh, it was mind-blowing. It was, I've never seen, you know, a character touching the world in such a unique way. I've never seen a world that was so detailed and so rich. We had no engine, uh, so we built our own engine from scratch. Um, and all we had to go on was our taste. As you can imagine, when you don't have any specs, you're basically given a blank check. You can invent the world if you want. And we completely did invent the world. Like the amount of features that we had, the final game had nine missions. The original game that we designed had 72. Assassin's Creed is about transporting people to a time that they can never really truly visit. The games have always had this really great sense of freedom, of exploring somewhere, of going to a historical context in these amazing looking worlds. I don't want the player just to focus, focus on fights and action and look at the ground, you know. I want people to look up. It's an open world, so I want the people to wait for the, for the sunrise. We saw this little prototype of naval combat that they were doing for AC3. We got super excited because it was beautiful, it looked fun, and, and I think this was the thing that kind of kicked off the idea that what if Assassin's Creed went into the golden age of piracy. For every game we try to, to bring new colors, new vibrant flavors. Brotherhood was really the sequel of Ezio. I mean, people love so much Ezio in AC2 that it was uh, really good to see him again and to see how grown he was. He was a leader now, not this young man anymore. We wanted to be able to climb everywhere, to discover every place, but have like no limitation on the exploration. Being able to just do cool things with parkour. Me, I can't do that. I can't climb buildings and jump over rooftops. With AC3, we really showcased that the franchise can go anywhere. With the frontier, the snow, there's actually a full seasonal weather system. So you have uh, summer, fall, winter, and spring. We dreamed big and just tried stuff. And then at some point it was working and it was magical. I was a kid and not very happy at school. I was always trying, always dreaming, drawing like uh, castles, places. I'm still doing the same thing, you know, now. It's, it's like creating universe, creating worlds, and this is what I love to do. I sat at home playing AC2 in my living room and said out loud to my husband, oh my God, this game, I just love this game so much. I'd love to work on this, this is so cool. Then when you get the opportunity to work on that game, you feel very connected to it. You feel protective of it. It's like a child. You want it to do really well. Innovating in AC is always both exciting, you know, and tricky. Innovation isn't necessarily like going crazy. It's about like finding the difference that matters and also keeping the soul of the brand alive. 
I always say is that it's really hard to just say, okay, let's innovate, let's start innovating. There's no such thing. Uh, instead, you know, I can say that raising as many lightning rods as possible, hopefully lightning will strike. Every year we take risks. This one we may have taken too many, too many risks. Um, there were a lot of ambitious elements. It was the biggest city we'd ever built. It was a really complex city, and if you look at it, it looks beautiful. Everything was fresh, everything was new. It was this huge ambition, which was, which was amazing. ACU was the first one in the AC brand where we saw that it was a much lower Metacritic. For people to work so hard on something for four years and then to have the reception that it had, you're leaving a piece of yourself in that thing. It's like you're, you're a kid being told you're ugly and you're fat. And that it hurts. Your little heart breaks a little bit. The worst thing that can happen actually uh, when you release a game is to have one of your bugs uh, becoming the front cover of uh, the entire internet. Nobody's happy when four uh, years of hard work are just an uh, image, you know, with the bug. Some people took it personally, some people took it upon themselves that, you know, they, they, they made mistakes. At the same time, I do feel for the fans who felt uh, somehow that it didn't meet their expectations. Uh, that's disappointing as well. And uh, that's uh, something we can never um, uh, take for granted as a developer. But the main thing for me is you look at that critically. You do post-mortems and you say, what can we improve? Ubisoft is, is very aware that as we push the games out, we constantly need to innovate and bring something new. And I've got this great core of technology that's there, um, but how can we do even more with it? By listening to the comments, reading the forums, reading the, the reviews, we always base our next steps on that. So we really took a step back. We had to admit, you know, the, the, the flaws. For sure, there's always challenges. Um, but to me, when you have a challenge, you, you face it and you move forward. And then you pick yourself up <laughs> and you move on to the next challenge that you have and you build on the things you did well and the things that people enjoyed and that they wanted more of. In the end, what is uh, at the core of our work is really to think about the player. So this is these people we should never, ever forget. The players are our audience, but we are also players. We want the game to be the best possible player experience because we all play our games. Right here, right now, we're in the middle of production of a new Assassin's Creed game. Um, there's hundreds of people working on the project and we're working on making sure that we do an amazing game. We want to do something that doesn't exist. We don't know how we will make it. We work hard, we fail, we retry, we test, etc. And in the end, we do something that we hope people will like. And we're putting a lot of new features, new things that the player hasn't been able to do before in the game. I really like to have people to think in a few years' time, five years, six years, is it? Do you remember that game that we did in 2015? It was great. From missions to features to cinematic to story, every second of this experience is going to be amazing. London, 1868, the center of the industrialized world. Profits see progress while workers never sleep. Slavery not only comes through irons and chains, but through our very struggle to survive. Time for a change. Enough of those who seek only their own gain. We're amidst an industrial revolution. The telegraph, electricity, are changing the way that we live, shaping our future. But it must be a future for everyone. A different revolution is rising, more subtle. A blaze from the ashes of an old brotherhood. We shall rise. Street gangs will be our armies. The slums our fortress. They 
say this is the modern era. I say it's time for a rebirth. And we shall lead the way. My name is Marc Alex Cicote, and I'm a creative director at Ubisoft Quebec City. Assassin's Creed Syndicate takes place in London in 1868. The Industrial Revolution, in essence, is society going from almost a medieval society to the modern society in which we live in today. It's an increase in productivity that's never been seen before in the history of mankind. You see transportation breaking through. In the span of a few years, enough railroads were constructed to go around the circumference of the Earth. It's a world that's ruled by science. We'll see tons of progress in medicine that prolongs the lifetime of people from about 20 years old to 50 years old. It's a world that's no longer ruled by kings or by religion. It's a world that's ruled by money. And this is something that completely changes society. You have the upper classes, which still rule the city because they are the ones who have the right to vote. So the faith of the lower classes was pretty much to either work hard and to die young, or to resort to something new. But the industrial era sees the birth of organized crime, a bit as we know it today. It's really a concept that takes root in the Victorian era. People would bend together to try to defend their common interests in what we could call syndicates. So the new assassin of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, his name is Jacob Fry. Jacob is a born and raised assassin. He's going to have allies that are the street gangs of London. Evie is twin sister of Jacob. She's the more calculated, the more rational uh, personality. She's the one that's going to guide uh, Jacob through his quest to free up London. Jacob will always approach the situation with a really hands-on and head-on approach. So he will be more brash, more brutal, more uh, confrontational. He's all about the trill. He's all about the chase. Assassin's Creed Syndicate will be the fastest paced Assassin's Creed that we've ever built. The speed of combat in Assassin's Creed Syndicate has changed from the past. We are making combat much more closer range than ever in the past. The reason we're doing this is that the Victorian era has changed the way we think about weapons. You can no longer walk down the streets with a, a sword at your hip, you would be arrested. People fought with hidden knives, hidden blades, uh, with brass knuckles. So there's a lot of freedom for the player to create chaos. We are making combat much more like a brawl in which you have to control uh, the crowd and jump from one enemy to another enemy. One of the key innovations of Assassin's Creed Syndicate is its traffic system, and it's going to open up so many more gameplay possibilities. Players can jump on top of vehicles, they can drive them, they can integrate them to parkour. They can kill and assassinate people from vehicles. It makes the combat much more faster paced, but also more brutal and more lethal than ever before. Let me show you what I mean in this first gameplay walkthrough of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. It's reckless. It's clever. The blighters control every criminal enterprise in the city. If they work for us... Yes, but they work for the Templars. Oh, no, they're paid off by the Templars. Slight difference. If we take control of the gangs, we take control of London from the bottom up. You are talking about building yourself an army. Miss Fry, tell him this is complete madness. 
You'd need to consolidate your control. I can keep the rival gangs and the police from sweeping in and seizing the territory. You can't very well send Bloody Nora an engraved invitation. We have no idea where they hold up. Yeah, we do. You found them? The Blighties are operating out of the rookery. Bloody Nora will be there. Good work, Clara. Tremendous work. Jacob! Can't talk now, Henry. Duty calls. To your health. Apologies, Mr. Green. We are now in the city of London, one of the seven boroughs that you'll experience in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. The city of London was the economic and financial heart of London in the 19th century. The borough fully embodies the hustle and bustle spirit associated with Victorian London. Booming businesses, busy sidewalks, and even busier streets. New to our game are iconic modes of transportation, including trains and carriages. Omnipresent in Victorian London, carriages will change how you play Assassin's Creed. You can take the reins and traverse the city faster than ever before. You can also hide in them, adding another tool to your stealth game or run over targets and enemies. The possibilities are endless. In this mission, Jacob wants to take over one of the Templars' control gangs in order to build an army against the Templars that run the city. To do so, he will need to conquer the borough by dislodging the enemy gang from their stronghold. Not unlike big cities today, rich and poor share the same environment. Even the richest neighborhood, like Westminster, had areas where the police would not dare set foot. These slums were where street gangs ruled. With the simple push of a button, we'll activate stealth mode as we are entering enemy-controlled territory. Also new to our game, the rope launcher will change the way you navigate throughout the city. With this new tool, you can climb the IS building in seconds or a zip line from rooftop to rooftop. Let's trigger Eagle Vision to study our surroundings. We can see that one of our allies is in trouble. Let's give him a hand. We first need to eliminate the lookout to make sure he doesn't call reinforcements. The throwing knives will take him out silently. We are facing a lot of enemies, so the head first approach is probably not a good idea. Also new to our game is the ability to use the environment to take out your enemies. Another one of our allies is in trouble. Let's take care of this before it's too late for him. Are you in danger, no, citizen? You don't look the slightest bit disreputable. Please don't Can start you? any trouble. Here now. He's oh. <laughs> Now that our ally is free, for the help, we'll ask him to assist us in our fight for this slum. Here is the stronghold leader, highlighted in yellow. Let's try to take him out with stealth, as he is more dangerous than common tugs. We'll use the hallucinogenic darts to turn our enemies against one another. Uh, 
This slum is now one, and your gang occupies the territory. Well, well. The assassins have come crawling out of their holes, have they? Damn it, boys! Deal with this! We were caught in a trap orchestrated by Bloody Nora, one of the seven Templar gang leaders. Her rule of the borough has been one of cruelty and suffering. We need to take her out once and for all. Let's go. Come on. Master. Go. Yep. Bloody Norris. Thugs are trying to make sure you don't get them, ramming our carriage to kill them. Our carriage has taken some damage but seems to be holding up. all-out confrontation between your gang and your rival for the ultimate control of the borough. Jacob feels right at home in these fights, thanks to our new fighting system, as it is faster and more responsive than ever before. and Evie Fry. And as of this moment, you all work for us. The team is really focused and working really hard for the last two years in making sure that we have an amazing and polished single player experience. All the people I encounter on the teams, I keep asking to take good care in like the little street corner that they are working on to try to tell a story with all the tools that they have, with the crowd that they are placing so that the, the game has a story to tell everywhere the player turns a stone. It's an intimate relationship between the player and the protagonist as he relives his life in a pivotal moment in history. It's a completely new kind of Assassin's Creed. That it's respectful of the franchise, but that it transforms its gameplay in a way that makes it more fun than ever. I want them to feel like it's the best Assassin's Creed that's ever been made. It's a bloody marvelous time to be alive. An age of invention. So many clever blokes dreaming up impossible machines, sorting away more gold than Queen Victoria herself. But none of those shillings ever makes it into the pockets of the poor devils whose blood is spilled building this glorious empire. The working class sleepwalks through life unaware of the machine that drives them. Let's wake them up then, shall we?
Reserve now for exclusive access to the Darwin and Dickens Conspiracy. Available October 23rd. PlayStation.